In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a new custom date range to the Google Analytics website performance dashboard. First, we'll cover adding a new rolling date period. For example, last 60 days, last 45 days, or last end days. Second, we'll cover how to add a new date period that is not a rolling window. For example, last quarter, two months ago, two years ago. You only need to make an update into this cup, top clip if you want to continue using the entire dashboard. However, if you're looking to modify a single clip, drag it into a new dashboard. You'll see the date dropdown appear. Follow the same steps in this video, but edit this clip-specific dropdown instead. Let's get right into our first scenario. Say you want to add the date period last 60 days. First, edit the clip. Navigate to the period values component. We're going to add a new option here. In this case, I'm going to add minus 60 into my formula. Next, navigate to the period labels component and add the label that would correspond to the period value you just added. It's very important that the label correctly lines up with the value you just created. So if you put the value in the third slot of the array, the label should be in the third slot too. Great, that's it, you are done. Everything else will be handled automatically by the rest of the formulas. To add another rolling date range, simply repeat the steps to include another option in both arrays. If you want to change the order of these date ranges, just change the order they appear in the array. Just remember, you have to follow the same order in both period values and period labels. Now, let's look at how we would add a date range that is not a rolling window. Say you want to add the date period last quarter. Just like in our first scenario, you will need to add the date period value and period label in your date dropdown. In this case, I'm going to add last quarter in the period values and period labels. I'll double check that my new values are in the same spot for both arrays. Here, things are a little bit different than in our first scenario. After adding the values to our arrays, we'll need to modify the formulas that are dependent on the variables used by the dropdowns. To be more specific, we will need to modify the formulas in the start date, end date, previous start date, and previous end date components. Let's start by modifying the start date formula. We will need to add a new date case into our switch statement. We can copy the formula for a case that closely resembles what we are trying to achieve and modify it to fit our needs. In this case, it is easy for me to copy the formula that is used for last month and modify it to be last quarter. So I've copied it. I'm going to change the case label from last month to last quarter. And I'm going to modify the last parameter in this formula from a month to quarter. We'll need to do the same for the rest of the components. So let's navigate to the end date component. I will copy the formula used for last month case again and modify the same things I did before. Repeat this for the previous start date and previous end date. In these two components, we'll need an if statement in order to handle the previous period versus previous year logic. If our selection is previous period, we'll subtract two quarters. Otherwise, we'll subtract five. And we're done. Let's save an exit. We'll test that our changes work. Today's date is February 22nd, 2017. 
which means that the dates for last quarter are October 1st, 2016 and December 31st, 2016. That's Q4. If I select previous period, my dates correctly show Q3. If I select previous year, my dates correctly show Q4 of 2015. And there you have it. This is how you add new date ranges in the Google Analytics website performance dashboard.